Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It was the best thing I ever done when I found you. The song simply says, Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Can I sing that one more time? Oh, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Come on, let's make one big choir. Lift your voice and say, Falling in love with Jesus. No other love I know like this, Jesus.
the best thing It was the best thing I ever The best thing I've ever, ever done It was the best thing I've ever done We love you, Lord That's why I love you I love you I love you, Lord, today Because you care for me thank you Jesus in such a special way that's why I praise you I lift you up and I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise we just gonna do it one time come on lift your voice said I love you love you right where you are. Clap those hands. Take one moment and give God the best praise that you can give him. Thank him for waking you up this morning. Thank you for giving. Thank him for giving you another day, another chance, another opportunity to lift your hands, another chance to say, Lord, I thank you. Somebody say, Father, I thank you. Father, I honor you. Father, I love you. Grab your Bibles. We thank God for our music ministry. They do such an excellent job. I love that song. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I applaud those of you who came out this morning. I know when it's dreary like this and cloudy and rainy and cold, it's a good day to stay in the bed, but you persevered. And I believe God's going to honor you for your perseverance. Numbers chapter 14. I just want you to listen to me this morning. Let me read a little bit for you. Of course, we had our New Year's Eve celebration the other night. And I want to really pick up where I left off. But I want you to listen to this, and I'll read a little bit more than I normally read. God is trying to bring the children of Israel into the promised land. And they find out that there are giants in the land. That somebody is inhabiting the land that God promised to them. And they don't know how to handle it. And so it says, then all the congregation raised their voices and cried out. And the people wept that night. And all the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the entire congregation said to them, if we had only died in the land of Egypt. 
or even if we had died in the wilderness. So why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become plunder. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, watch this, let's appoint a leader and return to Egypt. Now you got to understand that Egypt represents bondage. So they're saying that let's, let's appoint a leader and go back into captivity. Let's go back into bondage because bondage was more comfortable than this freedom that we we're experiencing. Then Moses said, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces in the presence of all the assembly of the congregation of the sons of Israel and Joshua, the son of Nun and Caleb, the son of Japuna. And those who had spied out the land tore their clothes and they spoke to all the congregation of Israel saying, the Lord, which we passed through to spy out the land is an exceedingly good land. The land which we passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, then he would bring us to this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Here's the instruction. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are our prey. For their protection is gone from them and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. But all the congregations said, stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in a tent of meeting to all the sons of Israel. You may be seated. I want to use for our subject today, are you spending or are you investing? In your life right now, are you a spender or are you an investor? When I use the word portfolio, many investors understand what I'm talking about. The word portfolio simply means a range of investments, typically financial investments that an individual or an organization owns. It typically consists of things like stocks and bonds and mutual funds and commodities and real estate and cash and cryptocurrency and the like. And the fact about it is, you want to know the difference between people who are rich and people who are poor? People who are rich invest, and people who are poor spend. People who are rich invest in assets that produce income. People who are poor buy stuff that has no return. It's pretty when you wear it. It does not appreciate and it does not return an investment. Watch this. But my aim today is to show you that your portfolio is greater than your financial investments. The investments that you've made, the ones that you're going to make, is greater than a financial contribution. Watch this. Your real portfolio consists of your time, your thoughts, your words, your actions, your habits, and your money. All of that's in your portfolio. And watch this. Here's a heavy word I want to give you. Everybody in the room, listen to what I'm telling you today will change your life. You must stop spending your thoughts, your time, your words, your action, and your money Everything must be an investment. You didn't shout. If you didn't shout, you didn't get it. You must stop spending your thoughts, your time, your words, your actions, and your money. Everything must be an investment. I'm going deeper. Watch this. To spend means to waste. It means to squander. It means to lay out with no anticipated return. To invest means to lay out for a purpose to which a profit is expected on top of that which is invested. And I want you to think about how many thoughts you have had that have been spent and not invested. How many words you have spoken that have been spent and not invested. How many actions you have demonstrated that have been spent or wasted and not invested. In other words, did not bring you a return that you were longing to receive. 
You're quiet. We must stop wasting everything. Life must be an investment. And watch this. We must start to see everything as now. I said this the other night. Don't want you to miss this. Your future is based on your now. And if you keep saying, I'm going to, you never will because I'm going to starts with now. And if you don't change what you're doing now, if you don't change how you're thinking now, if you don't change what you're saying now, if you don't change your now, your future will not change. So stop referencing your future and start paying attention to your now. Now watch this. I want to show you something. It all starts with thought. Everything that has ever been created, including the heavens and the earth, all started with a thought. Which means that thought leads to creation. And if thought leads to creation, and I judge and analyze my thoughts, would I like what my thoughts create? If you just pull my thoughts out of my brain right now and they were responsible for creating my future, would I be happy with the thoughts that I'm considering and pondering on? And would I want those thoughts to produce in my future? Maybe I'm preaching to the wrong church. <clears throat> the chair you're sitting in was once a thought. The car that you drove here today was once a thought. The clothes you have on right now were once a thought. Everything, the, the auditorium that we're sitting in at one time was just a thought. Think about that. As big and as vast and wonderful as it is, it was just a thought. And it, when you really think about it, a thought produced it. So if I don't like what my life is producing, maybe I need to change my... You're going to get it in a minute. Everything began with a thought. The thoughts, watch this heavy statement. The thoughts that I consent to now, the thoughts that I entertain now, are the very things that manifest, that show up, that are birthed in my life. And the problem is, many of us sitting in this room are thinking about things we don't really want and wondering why they are birthed in our lives. You're thinking about being broke. You're thinking about being broken. You're thinking about all types of negative things, and you're wondering why negative things are being birthed in your life. You're thinking bad about your marriage, thinking bad about your business, thinking. You got a business, somebody, I bet you nobody ain't even going to show up tomorrow morning. The weather going to be bad. Well, what do you expect? <clears throat> Let me show you something heavy. Matthew 16 and 19 says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. God says, whatever you allow, I'll allow. And whatever you don't allow, I won't allow. Could it be that you are allowing some things you don't want? I'll go deeper in a minute. <clears throat> Every moment of time, you are either spending or investing. Every waking moment. And what's really heavy is even when you're sleeping, what you go to sleep thinking produces in your life. Every thought, every word, every action, every interaction, every reaction, every moment of time you're either spending or investing. And if you would begin to analyze your life and ask yourself some heavy questions, you'd have to say, have I been spending the majority of my time spending, which means wasting, or have I been investing? Have I been putting my words out 
Because watch this, you're going to get a return either way it goes because they won't return void. But are you getting the return that you're seeking or are you just wasting words, wasting thoughts, wasting time, wasting money, wasting... Wasting other people's time. Most of us, watch this, thought is really the currency of heaven because everything starts with a thought. And the heavy question is, are you wasting the currency of heaven? Are you wasting your thoughts? When we look at our text, the Bible says that God is bringing the children of Israel to the promised land. The other night, I talked about the promised land being those things that God promised you, those goals, those objectives, the person that you want to ultimately become. The vision fulfilled is represented by the promised land. And uh, all of us who are trying to reach that place, we have to understand that there will be times when it will look like we will not accomplish what God promised. And I told you the other night, you have to grab a picture of what God showed you and hold on to it despite the adverse situations, temptations, distractions, whatever it is that comes against you, you have to hold on to the picture until God surrounds you with all the things that you need to fulfill the promise. But the children of Israel are challenged with this because God has promised them a land, but when they send spies out, which was a faithless act in the first place, they send spies out to spy out the land for 40 days. I want you to think about something. For 40 days, they looked at the land, and they came back with a negative report. So that was 40 spent, wasted days. How long have you been looking at something that God told you to birth and still hadn't moved? And how many days have you spent and not invested? You ain't gonna shout, but I'm coming to your door anyway. I'm gonna ring your doorbell. How many days have you and I, I'm not, I'm not excluding myself, have we wasted trying to get approval from people Got denied by two banks. Come on, somebody. Somebody said it wasn't good enough. How many days have we wasted? Ten spies come back with a negative report. God already said the land was good. They said it wasn't good because they were afraid. Wasted. 40 days wasted. Watch this. When they heard the news, the congregation cried and they murmured. They were spending. That's wasted time. Every time you murmur and complain, you are spending, not investing. Let me say it to this side. Every time you, we murmur and complain, this don't make no sense. This, that is a waste When you could have been taking those words and investing them for the return that you wanted, but we're comfortable wasting. Moses and Aaron, Joshua and Caleb lay on their face in front of the people and they try to invest a word in them and they say, listen, the Lord has removed their protection. They are pray for us. If we obey the Lord and don't rebel, God is going to do everything that he promised. They're investing their words, but there's so many people against them. The people say stone them and they watch this. They spent their thoughts and didn't even consider somebody who was trying to invest. And that's why it's so important that you don't get entangled with spenders. People who only waste their thoughts, waste their words, waste their actions. Why? Because you will become. You are the sum total of the people that you hang with. 
And if you hang with a bunch of spenders, you'll be a spender. If you hang with a bunch of folks who don't invest financially, don't have any money, you won't have any money. If you hang with people who only talk negatively, you'll end up talking negatively. If you only hang out with people who do crazy stuff, you'll start doing crazy stuff. If you only hang out with people... That's why you got to find the right people who are doing things that God has called you to do, who are already doing it so that you can line your life up with them and understand how they cultivated their thoughts and their words and their actions and their habits to produce something that brought a return in their lives that they wanted. Watch this. What's the point of the text? I'll be done soon. To devote all of your positive thinking, your constructive thinking towards what you're believing for. And watch this. Don't accept any rumors or anything that does not contribute or line up with your promised land. Do not accept it. Do not accept it. Let me say it again. Do not accept it. I don't care if it's a rumor. I don't care if it's obvious. The people said it's obvious that they're larger than us. I don't care how obvious it is. If it does not line up with what God promised me and showed me, I will not accept it as a challenge or reality. God's going to work it out somehow. I'm going to accept what God says. I'm going to deny what I see. I'm going to deny how I feel. I'm going to deny what I heard. You were sitting there right there with me. You heard the doctor's report. I heard it. I'm not denying what he said. I'm just denying the reality of what he said for me. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not crazy. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm investing my thoughts. I'm investing my time. I'm investing my actions. Why? Because I don't want to be sick. Why would I invest in being sick when I want to be healed? I'm going to invest my time in being healed. Why would I invest my time in being broke when I don't want to be broke? You're around here. I don't want to see no money. You don't got to see no money. If God promised it to you, you ought to start talking it up. You ought to start believing what God said and showed you despite what you're seeing and presently experiencing experiencing oh I don't know who I came to talk to today but you got to stop accepting stuff that does not line up with what God showed you or you'll keep experiencing what you've been experiencing you got to get to a place in your life and say I don't care how evident and how obvious it might seem what God says supersedes what I see what God says supersedes what I hear What God says even supersedes what you say, doctor, I have no disrespect for you. What you say, lawyer and judge and... See, you make me preach like my elders. That's what my elders were trying to tell you, that God will be a doctor in the sick room, that he'll be a lawyer in the courthouse. That What they're trying to say is that the word of God supersedes everybody else. I don't understand all that fancy stuff that you're saying, but all I know is I was sick and God healed me. I was in trouble and God got me out. I was going through this and God provided for me when I didn't know how I was going to make my way. They don't know all of this stuff, but they knew God. That's why every now and then when you look at some stuff, you just throw up your hands and say something contrary to what you're experiencing. When you don't see a way, throw up your hands and say, he's a way maker. Come on, he said he's the lily of my valley. Come on, somebody. When it's dark, you got to declare he's the bright and morning star. Come on, somebody. Open up your mouth. Start investing your words and your thoughts and stop spending them. The Bible says, Philippians chapter number four, verse eight, everything I'm going to teach you this year is in the Bible, but I'm going to change the way you look at it. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if there's any worth thing worthy of praise, think about these things. Let me give it to you in the New Living Translation. Now, brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true. What is true? Watch this. God's word is truth when other things seem to be true. 
Fix your thoughts on what's true, what's honorable, what's right, what's pure, what's holy, what's admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. What are you thinking about? The Bible says think on good things, things that are lovely, things that are wonderful. Think on the promise. Don't think on the problem. Think on the promise. Don't think on the problem. Why are you spending more time on the problem than the promise? Why are you spending more time visualizing your problems than your promises? You ain't talking back to me. I'll be out of your way in a minute. Like I said, it could be the most obvious contradiction in the world like giants inhabiting the land. If it does not contribute, don't accept it. If you do, you are spending and not investing. It could be giants. We talk about the Bible. It was lions in the lion's den. It was a fiery furnace. But for you, it could be a boss. It could be a racist. It could be a hater. It could be a chauvinist. It could be debt. It could be lack. If it does not line up with the promise, then why are you accepting it? All God wanted them to say is, I don't care what I see. I don't accept it because it don't line up with the promise. And I accept the promise despite what I see. And God would have began to move because he did it for the next generation. If it does not align with the promise, don't accept it. It's not denying, watch this, it's indifference. Indifference means it's non-acceptance. It's not denying what's going on, it's just not accepting it. I don't deny. I just don't accept. <clears throat> Watch this. I see it just like you do. I heard the report just like you did. I just choose not to accept it. Turn what you hear into what you wish you heard. And then you'll be investing. If the doctor gives you a bad report, in your mind, change it to what you wish you would have heard. And put your hope and faith on that. And that's investing. If you look at your bank account and it's not what you want it to be, then think about what you want it to be. And put your hope and faith on that. And then you're investing. If your marriage is not what you want it to be, paint a picture of what you want it to be and invest in that. Put your thoughts on that. Put your words on that. Put your actions towards that. Why? Because what you accept determines whether you are investing or spending. If you accept something that does not line up with the promise of God or what God showed you, you're spending. If you accept what God said or showed you despite the contrary evidence, you are investing. And you know one thing about an investment? It's heavy. I, I don't want to get off my notes, but a bad investment is better than a good spend. Because watch this, if I buy these sneakers, I can wear them, but they ain't going to bring me nothing else. If I make an investment and the investment fails, I can at least write it off on my taxes and get some benefit from it. And so even a bad investment is better than a good spend. And the thing about investing is when you start, often it starts slow. And people save their money and they start making investments in things that produce money. And then when they make their first investment, it produces a little money. And you're like, oh, that little money, man, that little money ain't nothing. Then they take a portion of that and save it and they take it back and they invest it again. And then it produces a larger amount of money. And then they keep repeating the process over and over. And before you know it, the money gets so big 
that the people who are spending wonder, why in the world you got so much money? This ain't fair. No, it is fair. Because you're spending because when they started investing, you didn't see much return. But they kept practicing investing. And over a period of time, their investments grew so quickly and so rapidly and they become so robust that nobody can no longer deny them. And if you would start investing your thoughts, they may not start yielding you big returns immediately. But if you keep repeating the process, I'm preaching better than y'all shout. If you keep investing your words and repeat the process, watch this. The parable of the talents. Got about 10 minutes, I'm out. The parable of the talents proves my point. The Bible says one man is given five, one is given two, and one is given one. The one who's given the two and the one who's given the five, they take it and they invest it. And they get a return on their investment. The one who gets, had two gets four. The one who had five gets ten. The one who had one buried his. Well, you say he didn't spend it. Yes, he did. Why? Because he wasted it. That's why the Lord was angry with him when he came back because he saw what the other men did with theirs. He says, you invested. He says, I'm happy with that. I'm excited. He says, you spent. He says, take the one who has one and give it to the one who has 10. And we're wondering why the haves keep getting. Wake up in this church. You're wondering why he keep getting blessed and I keep... Maybe that person is investing and you're spending and until you stop spending and start investing, you won't reap the harvest that you're due. Let me help you. What are some forms of spending? And let's see if you've been spending. Hatred. If you're spending any of your time hating on anybody for any reason, Hatred is spending. Even if the person did you something that's worthy of your hate, that's why you shouldn't hate them back. Why? Because you become a spender and not an investor. You don't understand they discriminated against me. I understand that I don't have time to hate you. Why? Because you're messing up my investment. And I'm trying to accomplish something, do something, and I don't have time to spend. Spend my time and my thoughts on hating you. So hatred, unforgiveness, watch this, quarreling, fighting, bickering is a waste of time. It's spending. If I had time, I would, I would say something right there. Gossiping. It's spending. Because watch this, people who invest don't waste their time talking about people. They talk about ideas. And I'm going to show you something with this next series I'm going into. If you want to mess up a big dream, all you got to do is give it to small-minded people. All of these are forms of spending. And when we really think about how we've been spending our time, I bet you we've been doing a lot more spending talking about your kid instead of speaking into him or her. That's the difference between spending and investing. I'm not saying that there are times that they don't need to be disciplined and dealt with, but I need to spend more time speaking into you. Husband and wives, I need to spend more time speaking into you than about you. And who have you been spending all your time talking about when you should be speaking into? Watch this. If you don't like the life you have, 
Invest in it. And stop spending or wasting your time, your thoughts, your words, your actions, your money, your habits, creating unproductive habits. Here I am, I'm closing. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 19 through 20 says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have placed before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants, by loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding close to him. For this is your life and the length of your days, so that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them. I sit before you today life and death, blessings and curses. I sit before you today choices. Investing or spending. Because spending ultimately leads to your demise. Investing leads to life. And what would my life be like if I thought about everything that I did as an investment or a spend? I'm about to go spend time with these folks. Is this an investment or is this a spend? Now, now, I'm not saying that recreation is never necessary because it is. Because if you're going somewhere, you're going to play golf, go do your thing, have some fun with some people who, who, are, going, who are going to feed into you and, and build you up, then that's an investment. But if I'm about to go around a bunch of negative people who are going to just pull me down and change the way I think about things and, and give me a negative perspective about everything that's going on in the world, is that really a spin or an investment? When I go to work in the morning and there's a group of people talking about how bad the job is, if I go join that conversation, would that be a spend or an investment? When I wake up to eat tomorrow and I have a choice between something good and something that's good for me, is this going to be a spend for me or an investment? When I wake up tomorrow with a choice to go to the gym or not to go. When I'm thinking, should I date this person or not? Would this be a spend or an investment? If I thought about everything like that, it might change how I do things and why I do things, the way I do things. If I have to do this or do it well, would this be a spend or an investment? But here's what I must do. I got to go. I must formulate the end from the beginning and hold on to the picture of what God showed me. Mark 11 and 24 says this. It says, therefore, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them and they will be granted you. So watch this. I am investing when I say things like I am. Not I will be. I am the head. That's why I always said, I am above. I am blessed. I am healed. I am strong. I am abundantly supplied. I am. There is only now. And if there's only now, then now is am. Somebody's going to miss that. Now is am. So I am now. I'm choosing now what I choose to be despite what the evidence says. I am healed. Evidence may not line up, but I am healed. Evidence may not line up, but I am rich. I am abundantly supplied. I can't take care of my kids, send my kids to college, buy them a car, do what I need to do. I am. I'm not going to struggle for the rest of my life. I am. I'm not waiting for my change to come. I am my change. I am. That's why when God told Moses, Moses says, who should I say sent him? He says, tell him I am sent you. I am. I, I'm never going to be anything, and I never was. I always am. 
I'm always operating in the present. I'm a present help in the time of trouble. I am your help right now. I am your joy. I am your peace. I am your provision. I am your provider. And as I close today, what have you been saying you are? You've been saying negative things about yourself? Saying you silly, you. Come on, you know what you've been saying. And watch this. What matters most is not what other people say about you, it's what you agree to and what you say about yourself. You can't call yourself fat and end up skinny. You can't call yourself broken and end up rich. You can't call yourself sick and end up healed. Why not invest those words and thoughts and actions until they become habits? And people who win, watch this, they have made winning a habit. All I do is win, win, win. No matter what. Why? Because I've made a habit of obeying God's word and doing what God said and conflating to what he showed me not what the evidence says isn't that what faith is? faith is the substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen come on stand up let's if you receive that word you ought to be clapping And you, you can start to change today. When you discipline your kids and after you fuss at them and tell them about wasting the cereal, say, come here, the reason why I fussed at you is because there's greatness in you. The reason why I tell you don't hang with those kids is because there's greatness in you. And I don't want that greatness to be ruined by somebody altering the way that you think. Let me speak. Every married couple, you ought to have a conversation, say we can sit around here like cowboys and Indians. Or we can have some agreement. We can talk at each other or we can speak into each other. But watch this, we're about to take Holy Communion in just a moment. But Holy Communion is all about Jesus coming, reuniting us with God. Why? So that the old man could die and there can be a resurrection to a new life. So communion is about a new life. And the other night I talked about detaching and attaching. In 2022, the old things have to fall away. And all things have to become new. Watch this. In a couple of months, if I haven't seen you, you should have to reintroduce yourself to me. Pastor, let me reintroduce myself because you know the old me. But I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. And all things have become new for me. Watch this. While you're standing, if you're here today and you want to give your life to the Lord, you want to rededicate your life, you want to join our church, it's easy. All you have to do is take some steps of faith. Come right here. We're not going to embarrass you. We're going to take you to the back and minister to you in a personal way. It's not our goal or our aim to ever make you feel anxious or uncomfortable. But if you would be so kind to take a step of faith and come to the front. Come on, clap your hands, saints of God. Clap your hands and come to the front. Yes. Bless you, sir bless you. Come on, I see you moving. I see you moving. Is there another? Is there another? Shh, 
Hang on one second for me. I want to give one more appeal. Maybe you need a church home, a place where you can learn and grow. And you're saying, I, f- I feel like this could be the place. If God is leading you to this place. It's simple. Just take this little simple walk. Everybody needs a church home, a place where they can grow. Receive the word on their level. And so if that's you, all you have to do is come. Just want to make sure I've gotten everybody. Just come. Yes, there we go. Come on. Do me one favor, family. Look at your neighbor. Tell him I got my mask on so we're cool. But do you need to go up there? Should you be up there? Should you be up there? Is the Lord speaking to you? Don't, don't delay. Don't wait. Just, just go ahead and go today. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. This is one decision that'll change your life forever. Come on, there he is. Come on, clap your hands. Is that it? All right. All right, clap for him, family. Clap for him. Do me a favor. Come on. Come on, ministry leaders. Take them to the back. Take them to the back. They're going to speak to you in the back. They're going to welcome you. Welcome on behalf of myself, my lovely wife, Lady Shorman. We're so proud to have you as a part of our family. And thank you for having the courage and the boldness to come. We love you. Amen. If you, if you did not receive a communion cup when you walked in, simply raise your hand. It's our first communion of the new year. Raise your hand so that we can see you. Jesus went. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. They hung him high. As we prepare to take our first communion of the year. This year, I want you to think about this every time you take communion. Every month you take communion, I want you to wave bye to the old you and embrace the new you that you've become. Because every month you should experience growth. And I want you to celebrate that growth every time we take communion. We thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made at Calvary. But he died that you might have life and life more abundantly. And so we celebrate what he did on Calvary by becoming new people, becoming resurrected to the new life, walking in his path and his precept for our lives. The Bible says that they were gathered together all in the same place in the upper room and Jesus passed out the bread it says this represents my body that will be given for you let's all eat together in the same manner he took the cup said this wine represents my blood in the New Testament as often as you do this do this in remembrance of me let us drink Come on, let's all sing together. Right here. But that's not how.
I'll just sing softly, say that's love. You may be seated, you may be seated. Now that's love. Come on, if you know that was love, clap your hands. Listen, before we go, before we go, before we go, we're gonna honor God in and through our giving. Here's what I know to be true. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Which simply means this. If you give and you make somebody else's life easier, then you're obligated to receive and for your life to be made easier as well. And to the degree that you bless others, you are obligated to be blessed. That's what the Bible means. Give and it shall be given unto you pressed down, shaken together, good measure running over, shall men give unto your bosom. And so whenever you become generous, you create this cycle, this cycle, which is a wonderful thing. And watch this, for somebody in the room right now, you want people to be generous to you and you want to receive, then guess what? Give away what you want. You want more love? Become more loving. Let me talk to this side. You want to receive more love? Give more love. Yeah, you want more kindness? Be kinder. You want more empathy from other people? Have more empathy for other people. Oh, y'all quiet in this Christian church. And the key is that you have to give it first. Then you receive. signs follow they don't proceed so watch this this is what I want you to do I want you to get your best gift you should get your best gift get your best gift if you appreciate the work of this church and all that we have done and for those of you who have been around you know all the stuff that we do and all the stuff that we're involved in and so take a moment if you would grab the best gift that you can get for somebody that might be ten dollars might be eight dollars for somebody it might be a thousand dollars Somebody might be 10,000 or 100,000. You, you never know who you're sitting next to. And you never know who you're sitting next to, what they might be able to do in the future. But here's one thing that we honor. We honor whatever it is that you give. And so watch this. Have peace about what you give. Whatever you feel like the Lord has laid on your heart to give, if it's bigger than you feel like, man, that's pretty big. At some point, old things have to pass away and you have to embrace new things, even in the area of your giving. So take a moment, if you would, and grab that gift. If you're doing text to give today, simple little code we have, a short code. You just put the dollar sign, the amount of money you want to give us and send it to 84321. 84321. That means in the top of the line, the little two line, just put 84321 in the message box. Put the dollar sign in the amount of money that you want to give. Dollar sign $40. Dollar sign $400. Dollar sign $4,000. You ready to give? All right. So we're going to start this year off right. All right, let's do it. Lift those seeds up. Father, we honor you. We thank you for this day. Father, we give because this ministry has been called to make a difference, to make an impact. And Father, we want to be a part of that impact, not only in this city, in this state, but all over the world. And Father, because people were diligent and selfless, I pray, Lord God, that your word becomes manifest in their lives. That because they've given, that people will give back to them. Press down, shaking together, and running over, God. That men and women will give unto their bosom. And Father, we thank you. 
right now that is done in Jesus name amen amen you may serve the people of God Great job, guys. Great job. Amen. Come on, clap your hands all over the sanctuary. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We appreciate you. As you know, these temperatures are starting to drop, and so make sure that you wrap up. Wrap up later on today. It's going to get pretty cold. But uh, just know that we'll be right back here next Sunday. Right back here next Sunday, 9-15. Invite somebody with you. A uh, few things I'm going to resurrect. I'm planning on resurrecting this year is our marriage ministry. You've heard me talk about marriage a lot. It's just been on my heart. It's been on my heart. And uh, so coming soon, coming soon, we're going to resurrect marriage ministry. But here's what I need you to do. I just need you to make sure that we stay safe. I want to keep having in-person service. So I need you to keep those masks on. I need you to do everything that you can do to keep yourself healthy and keep your neighbor healthy. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we got healthcare people who work around and if they walk around, they may make sure you got your mask on. Be kind to them. Amen. They just want to make sure that we stay healthy. All right. All right. All right. Thank you for wearing your shields. I see all of that. I appreciate you. And uh, we're going to keep on rolling. And I believe, God, that we're going to stay safe. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for every seed you sow into this ministry. Thank you for worshiping with us. Lady Shawman is right there. Come on, clap your hands for Lady Shawman and Megan and DJ. We thank God for them. If you're visiting with us, if you're visiting, if you're visiting, would you, would you stand up? Would you stand up so we can see you? If you don't mind, if you're shy and you don't want to stand up, it's all right. But if you're visiting, we want to clap for you. Amen. God bless you. I hope you had an amazing time. I hope something we said or did will make you come back again next Sunday and bring somebody with you. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping with us. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet, everybody. Don't touch anybody, but just look at your neighbor and say, it was good to be here with you. It was good to be here with you. Come on, tell somebody it was good to be here with you. Now watch this family. Watch this family. As we leave, we don't 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 assemble too much just just we want to keep you safe go ahead and get out here go to your cars not too much hugging just elbow bumps hand bumps things like that just for this season amen so we can get through this and get back to normal and have church the way we want to amen amen, amen. all right we love all of you we appreciate you i speak the blessings of the lord over you i pray that the blessings of the lord will overtake you in 2022 so much so that you have overflow that you can share and be a blessing to somebody else. I speak peace. I speak joy. I speak traveling grace. In Jesus' name we pray. The saints of God said, amen, amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Have a great day.